Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Um, so, very happy to be back here. Um, so today's topic is above the ego, uh, honoring the dimension of sacred. So, of course, these topics somehow has been coming from the idea of foundational practices, the teachings uh, based on our uh, traditional teachings, but trying to uh, keep them simple and to keep them something uh, explained in a way that we can understand. So that's kind of at least my intention is here. So I wanted to <clears throat> kind of go back and say a little bit about why why I choose this topic is is that many times you know in this notion of a, a refuge in a tradition that uh, taking refuge refuge tree uh, or outer refuge inner refuge there's many different uh, re forms of ref refuge practices but this is all in the end, I think it's about ability to seek for help, uh, ability to look for help, it's ability to outreach. It sounds probably easy for all of us, but it's not easy. I think many times, many people are not able to outreach, ask for help, trust uh, take help. Uh, people are not able to do that. People really like a kind of lost in the lack of trust within themselves, to themselves, and others. So of course, as many of these teachings, they always talk about you know trusting yourself, trusting inner refuge, going to the in deep refuge to the truth rather than who teaches the truth or who represents the truth or even who symbolically represent the truth, like images of the sacred. But of course, they all are forms of place where you can take refuge. Not saying one is um, um, more important than the other, or it depends on everybody, everything is oneself. But the main, main point here is, I think, ability to uh, able to ask. Um, so when you cannot trust yourself, trust your mind, when you cannot help yourself or guide yourself, uh, it's really important to learn to trust others. And hopefully you will find, find people you trustworthy, for sure. Uh, you hope for that, you pray for that, at least learn to trust others. And then also learn to open open for higher dimension. Higher dimension means something beyond you and beyond others or beyond self. So basically, I think one of the biggest problem of our humanity, society today is it's, it's the people, not the spiritual tradition or wisdom or knowledge, information. They are not a problem. Problem is the people, how people use the information, how people use the technology, how people use the name of religion, how people use all of them. That's the problem. So in some sense, people are, in some sense, a problem creator, not some of these higher sacred, what they represent. So in some sense, I think what I'm saying here is really learning to trust yourself, when you learning to help yourself, when you cannot help yourself, learn to trust others, and also include higher than the self. That you know, self means every time there is a somebody out there who has a a power, who is in a position of power, who is uh, in name of profession, who is stronger than you. Uh, and uh, but they're still a person. They're still human beings. So sometimes you trust them, but you also learn to trust beyond them. You trust yourself, and you also learn to trust beyond yourself. So this is the when uh, the idea of here is the above the ego. It's it's somehow 
basically a very simple question to all of us is, do you reflect on these issues that there is a place that you can trust beyond the ego or beyond your pain, beyond yourself, beyond somebody, beyond your engagement or conflict conversation with somebody? Can you trust the silence for a moment? Just being with somebody, can you trust instead of putting so much trying to be right, trying to prove to be right, trying to remain in the stillness in connection with somebody for a moment? Can you trust that more than you're talking? Can you trust that? Trust to things that more than you're doing? You, can you trust your being more than you're doing? Can you trust your s silence connection with, connection with somebody than talking and convincing, clarifying, defending, just stop talking? Can you? This is the question. So, uh, in some sense, we all are, uh, as a human being, I think we all get lost in search. Getting lost in searches. We are searching for light and then find ourselves in a darkness. We are searching for love and finding ourselves in a deep pain are lost. We are searching for connection with somebody or something, then we lose, feel very disconnected, isolated, lonely. We are looking, searching for peace. We start wars. I was just watching the World War II, all the episodes on Netflix, just finished it. It's just amazing to see how crazy human being can be. It's a scary. So if you look at all the wars, the reason for the wars, why war started, how they started, how different parties get involved in the situation, it's just, it's just true, crazy, samsaric. What capable of we are, we are able to do. In the name of love, peace, connections. So we are kind of, I think, some sense lost in the name of searching or search. So here, when I talk about honoring the dimension of sacred, I just wanted to say a few words in context of tradition. In, uh, in, uh, in Bhairan tradition, in Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhist traditions, I think we all, there is some sense of uh, Beyond ego is, I think, something that we all look for. And uh, when we talk about uh, emptiness, shunyata, uh, we are referring to the same thing, I think. We are referring to something, we are saying, demprame means, you know, there is nothing, no inherent truth to grasp. Dangzi, like a grasping self. Grasping the self who you are not. So you are grasping to who you are not and grasping at things what you don't really need in order to what you are looking for. So what you are, look, what you are looking for, what you are grasping on in the world, in your life, they are not what you are looking for because you are looking for maybe peace, you are looking for connection, you are looking for love, you are looking for happiness. And, but the way you are looking at them, the way you are grasping at them, it's, it's not giving anything. That's how we are lost in searches and we find the opposite rather than finding what we are looking for. So, so the idea of beyond ego and sacred space, those are the word, I think the sacred, let's focus for a moment on this. Sacred is something that what brings you closer to yourself. Where you're looking, how you're looking, how you're relating, how you're practicing, what it means to you, all this is very important in relation to the sacred. For example, a shaman who take journey in the wilderness into the nature and uh, without humans, without human conflicts, without 
all these voices in the head, days of isolation, silence, being quiet, and finally able to encounter the power of the nature, the power of the connection to the nature. The, you can call it the spirits of the mountain, you can call it power of the nature, you can call it peace of art. So you are basically a true connection that when you are making with the nature. And that true connection through the nature, to yourself, what you do, what you feel, is that that moment you are feeling very close to yourself. You are at the door, at the entrance of that eternal, boundless, blissful self. You are right at the door to that eternal dimension, that pure dimension, through the connection, through the power of connection to the nature. Nature does that. That's what I think in some sense many shamans are doing. Not all the shamans has that approach, but there are higher level of shamans. I think they do have that approach. And in like in the form of Buddhism, when all this epistemology, which is really like a beautiful logic, to trying to prove that there's no something inherently out there, the way human being grasps, the way we get lost, the way we get trapped, the way we trap each other. There's nothing like that, there's anything there. So these logics are in some sense of trying to really prove, to understand, but then again, once again, these logics does not necessarily always prove. They become mere intellectual, wasting time of our life. When they are not applied in life, when they are not understood on a personal level, not just playing with intellectual level, then they don't serve either. But when they do serve, then you really feel these logics, these deep meditation brings you very close to yourself, to your true being. And when that happens, that is the sacred space. So sacred and the sacred space, let, let's reflect a little bit on these two words. The sacred is something that what brings closer to our self too. And the sacred space is, in a way, space is always absence of some event, activity, information, movement, and in this case, space is simply saying the absence or a break from pain identity. When the moment the pain identity rests, moment pain identity dissolves through some logic or dissolves through some realization, dissolves through some deep, direct connection to the nature, whatever way is dissolved, whenever it dissolves, you are closer to that sacred space. That is sacred. That space is the sacred space. That space is space because it's absence or beyond the ego or above the ego. This is the as a title, above the ego. So there is no particular sense of ego there at that moment. Of course, I'm not saying this. If these are not as easy it sounds like, or as I'm explaining, but they are not necessarily harder, hard or harder or unapproachable, or many of you think. So let's meet somewhere in the middle. Don't think it's impossible. Don't think it's easy as I'm explaining, but find your position and a place where you will able to encounter this sacred space. The truth is, I think, we don't need to go anywhere. We need, don't need to, to uh, change our name, food, diet, religion, travel somewhere, isolate yourself. Of course, we don't need to do any of those things. But sometimes you feel 
you need to do some of those things. But when you feel you need to do some of these things, then you need to do it. But when you don't feel the need of need to do all those things, don't believe in other people who imposes on you to believe, making you believe that you have to do some of these things. I don't believe in that. Because the sacred space is in everything. It's in everywhere. It's in everybody. It's in every situation. And particularly things that you, what you're trying to run away from. Because the Buddha discovered those truths in the sufferings. And suffering is what you are trying to run away from to find a bliss. I was just walking yesterday night in Berkeley Marine here, beautiful, beautiful sunset. And it was so beautiful to see the light. Of course, I could not help taking pictures. I took some pictures. Later, I will share with some of my poems. The light. Light does not require us occupy the space of the mountain. Light is not saying mountain, dissolve yourself, your solidity. We don't like your solidity. We dissolve your solidity. Or light is not saying to the ocean, the bay, saying change your nature, water. Light is not saying sky, you are too open. You're too big, too vast, too scary. Change it. Light is not saying anything. Light is just shining through the sky, changing its beautiful colors. Because sky allows that openness. The sacred space allows the beauty to manifest. Light is not saying to the mountain either. Mount light is illuminating the mountain. The mountain becomes so much more beautiful when they unite with the light. The water, same way. Light enters through the water, letting water be the water and shine through the water. The truth shines through false nature. The truth shines through sadness. The truth shines through sense of loss. The sacred space, the light, the awareness shines through everything. So what you're trying to run away from, it's right there in that person, in that emotion, in that pain, in that place, in that conflict, if you look for that. If you, if you run away from it, if you're trying to search for the light, as I said in the beginning, we are lost in searches. How much, how long we have been looking for happiness, how often we find ourselves in the sadness. How long we are looking for love and how long, how often we find ourselves getting angry at somebody who we love. How, how, how long we have looking for connection, seeking for connection, working on connecting with somebody, but in the process we lose the connection to ourself. Why we get lost? Because we, are, we believe we find somewhere else. You're running, running away from something and running, I don't know where, but in, 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 in the hope of finding something. But that's not always a good solution. But that does not mean sometimes we don't need to do that. Of course, people do a retreat, run away from the world. Yogis go up into the caves and hide there for years. Whenever we need to do that, need to do that, good to do that. But not doing, running away all the time, it's not, it's a bad habit. Run away few times in life. But most of the time, face it. So that, that's very important. So just talking a little bit more on a level of personal level, um, 
let's think about a little bit on a level of personal. We, we can talk about space as I talk about sacred space. We can talk about love. We can talk about acceptance. I think about these three terms. In our life, on our personal level, we always trying to have a space, and particularly in the Western world, privacy. I did not understand very much when I first time came to the West, because we didn't, in the East, we did not have much space to begin with. Everybody slept in a small room, shared small room. Families are very, so closely connected in one village, in one house, in one room. All the, all this issue of privacy was not much of our, in, in our head. But then when I start to listen a little closely, people needing a privacy, privacy, privacy. And then, then I also notice that when they find their private space, that is the where they are hiding. That is the, where they are feeling pain. That is where they are feeling lonely, isolation. That is where they get depressed and sad. What is the privacy? A privacy for ego, priv privacy for self, privacy for pain identity. That is where everybody is suffering. Getting out of that private space, tapping into more bigger space, sacred space, collective space, and inviting others in that sacred space, connecting with others through that sacred, open, sacred space. If we do that, then I think we are able to experience some sense of this love, notion of love or happiness, particularly love. I think in some sense of, you know, love and compassion that we always, everybody talks about it, but it's hard to experience because you cannot talk or you cannot think or you cannot force, you cannot pretend, but you do have right space in which you fall in love. We all know f f that first time when you fall in love, it's very hard or impossible to fall in love in the same way second time. Forget about third, fourth time, <clears throat> right? Why? Because first space was, there was no stories. First space was a clear, pure, open, confidence, playfulness. There, you can fall in love. And you can feel the amount of energy when you feel that connection of love. And that moment in those times, we also know that, you know, acceptance. You're, you're not always fighting for your ego with another person. You are so open to the other person. Let's eat. Yes, let's eat. Let's not eat. Okay, let's not eat. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's stay up whole night. Okay, that's fine. Let... It's easy to agree on everything. The moment when you feel that sacred space, in some sense, you're getting closer to the experience of that space, openness. It's easy to feel love in that space and easy to accept all situations and conditions because you do feel that love. But sometimes it's not, not possible because Second time, third time, there are a lot of stories in that. So, we're talking about this sacred space, uh, giving example of falling in love. In our everyday life, we need that. It's absolutely important to feel that and trust that and trying to find that. Also, sometimes, of course, you know, on a level, a professional level, 
the sacred space is very important. Any, any good organization, any great artist, any uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship or person who inventor, where do they, where do they come with these, all these magic ideas, solutions? Because they tap into this space, selflessness. In that selflessness, or in that, in that connection to that deep open space, I think what we call Tsal, in the Dokchen teachings we call Tsal, there is a dynamic energy, full of energy in that sacred space. You can trust that sacred space, tap into that sacred space and feel and connect to that dynamic energy. And what comes out of that dynamic energy? The effortless creativity. In the terms of the teaching, all the enlightened beings, all the both Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, how, do, how they have all this energy of compassion to helping others with selfless with a selflessness with no tiredness has not getting tired is because they're tapping into that selfless sacred space in which they find what we say chile so maybe chile enlightened activities. So for all of us, it's important to able to go beyond the ego, able to trust others, able to trust this sacred space, and, and the sacred space is the answer what you are looking for, because what you're looking for will arise from this new space of infinite possibility. If you are able to see enough, bring enough awareness in this space which is occupied by conflict and pain. So, so that's, I think, the main core. So maybe I'll just say, I know like uh, somebody just said, let's sing the mantra. I know uh, maybe we will definitely be singing the mantra, but if you're trying to run away with what I'm talking, then I think you should stop thinking, sing, stop thinking about the mantra, singing the mantra, focus on the topic that I'm talking about, because there could be one way of, oh, I don't want to hear that. It sounds very much like me, and I don't want to hear about myself, so let's just sing the mantra and forget about everything. Maybe that might be happening there, so, just be patient a little bit. We will be singing the mantra. Just one, one last thing I wanted to talk here. Many times I feel like we get, we get into this big confusion of one or more or many pain identity mix, getting mixed up with. For example, when you're trying to help somebody, I think one very important question to ask is, am I really trying to help somebody? Or I am trying to help myself in the name of trying to help somebody. As I teach, as a teacher, I ask this question all the time to myself. Am I really trying to help others or I am trying to help myself, or I have something self-interest in there, then I wanted to understand what that is. Is it acceptable? Is it not acceptable? Or what I need to do or what I need to work on? That's my journey. So we are, we are all in some way, as we talked to other previous Facebook Live teachings, we are all in some sense human being. We're meant to help each other. At the end of the day, we do that. A mother trying to help a child, or the ch children trying to help aging parents. 
you're trying to help your neighbor. We're always trying to help somebody. But when, and when we get more personally involved in trying to help somebody, you are getting trapped into your personality and pain identity, and you get mixed up with, are you helping somebody else? That confuses. And when you realize it's not about helping somebody, you just stop helping somebody because it's, because it's not about that. You're, you're confused, you're lost. There are many, I think, today's world, like a society, in particularly in the political world, particularly also social conflicts. There are many people very outspoken socially, but sometimes you feel also they are not, it's not coming from right place. It's coming from their own deep pain. But when they, when they speak, it's okay to speak, but when they're bringing their pain into other, other people's life or other collective spaces, I wonder, are they helping or damaging more? Politically, political climate is the same. I feel similar things. On a small scale, like, like our life, our ordinary life, we're trying to help children, or your husband, your wife, your community, your professionally, a psychotherapist trying to help a patient. I think it's always good to ask this question, am I really trying to help here? How clear, sacred, sacred space I have how freely flowing the warmth of energy from my heart. How willing to listen and accept others. These are core qualities I think we've got to have in order to be helpful on a collective level. So sometimes we get mixed with personal pain, collective pain, family pain, professional pain, these pain identity get mixed up with each other so badly, we don't know what the hell we are doing. But we use beautiful names. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help somebody. So I think it's because these mixing up with these different pain identity it's another deep way of getting lost in touch with that sacred space. And it is a deep kind of very, uh, how you say, smart, smart ego approach of getting trapped into the, not going above the ego, but getting deep into the ego, but not realizing it at all. Seems like a happening all the time in our life. Only thing what we can do is not look at other people, but look at yourself and see where you stand in these positions, approaches. So, uh, so anyway, I think uh, I will stop talking and uh, I will also, uh, play the, the, the music, uh, Salivaya Mantra. And uh, so during this moment, I think you, you can all sit comfortably. Just be aware of your place where you are. Bring the connection to the location. Bring the connection to your body. Feel, bring the presence of awareness in your body.
bring the light of awareness in your body. Feeling this vast, unbounded, sacred space in which we all exist, we are all connected, we are all exchanging. In this moment, we are connected through this practice. Connection is through our awareness. We are changing the warmth, exchanging the warmth and support to each other. Trusting this collective greater space, trusting this uh, space that you are feeling in you, above the ego, the sacredness, It's the inner refuge, the inner divine. Whatever feelings and thoughts and emotions, voices coming, they all are not, not occupying any space. They are like a offerings to that great space. Like whatever happens in the sky, they offer to the sky. Whatever happens new planet, new star come to exist in the universe, they are offering to the universe. Your own thoughts and emotions are offering to that inner sacred space. Allow them, let them move, let them express, let them breathe, and let them liberate by themselves. Allow that as we listen to the music.
Okay, wonderful. How is the meditation? Can you feel uh, just for a moment beyond you, beyond self, beyond ego, or not too strong ego, a little more connection to a collective cyber sacred space all around the world and tapping into that sacred space breathing better, clearing things better, connecting better, feeling your own self energy, warmth, much stronger, allowing the expressions of your higher self more, I hope, at least that idea. So I hope that uh, you all for day today as you walk out in your life, in your world, whenever these different identities are coming up, just be kind, gentle, good host, let them be and you hold that sacred space to which you feel more connection, more in which you are more grounded, in which you, your sense of self is more pure, more flow, more energy, more solutions if you need it. And whatever you are doing, allow it to come from that stillness space. Whatever you are saying to somebody, allow those speeches to come from that sacredness. Wherever you are looking, look through that sacredness, sacred space. Whatever you are listening to, listen through that sacred space. So enjoy this sacred collective space, which is so much bigger than us and beyond us, which is the source which gives birth to everything. And it knows more what you need than your ego will ever know. So trust that. Thank you.